We're actually going to start on our backs. So come down onto your mat and lay down and make sure you've got an imprinted spine so that the lower back is pressed down, pressing down into the earth and then drawing the core in. So, so feeling that core engaged towards the belly button, lift up one leg at a time so that the shins are parallel to the ground. And we're just going to start with gentle toe taps. So keep that um, engagement of the core really strong. Maybe even dig your fingers in and just make sure that that's nice and hard around that belly area. And the further away that you tap, the more difficult it is. And this is a relatively easy exercise to just start with a warm up, but you can feel that first thing in the morning, um, as we are right now, tapping the toes down. It's like, I'm finding it really difficult to not let my lower back come up and away from the ground. So it just goes to show that in that a warm up is pretty necessary just to get the engagement firing and extra strong. I'm going to keep tapping the toes. I'm just going to set the timer. Well, actually, no, we're just going to keep flowing intuitively. Keep tapping, start to tap further away from you just to challenge a little bit and then bring it in nice and close. And then further away again, notice how much more you need to engage to do these toe taps. And then back in again. And then we'll place the feet on the ground and just make sure that the heels are directly uh, underneath you so that you can reach down and touch them with the fingertips. Squeezing the glutes up, come up to your hip thruster. So it only needs to come to the point where you're a flat line from the shoulders to the knees and then down again. Squeeze to come up and then exhale down. Tuck under the tailbone as you squeeze the glutes to come up and then relax. So just gentle pulsations through here, warming up the glutes and the quads. Stay light in the toes, so in case the toes are gripping, just let them go. And if the feet are trying to push away, see what it feels like to slide them back in towards you. We're just going to keep going with the hip thrusters. The way that we're going to do it is kind of do um, sets or rounds of these. So a little bit um, more circuit hip style than Pilates. And then... And then we're going to relax the hips back down, keeping one leg bent, straighten the other leg, turn the leg out slightly so that you can see the heel and then gently lower that straight leg all the way to tap the ground and then back up again and keep moving. We'll do about 12 on this side, four, five, six. Keep that lower back imprinted against this, against the floor. 10, 11, 12, squeeze up, change legs. So left leg or the other leg, whichever one you started with, turn out slightly to begin and then start with your leg lift. So 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, two and one and then your final uh, movement for the warm up is a v up so v ups are like a double um a double leg lift so we're just going to do mini ones um sorry leg and arm lift so just coming from your um standard position where we've been starting with the feet on the ground lift the arms up and then squeeze the elbows and the knees together so it's kind of like a modified v lift come back out tap down squeeze so as you're squeezing your elbows and your knees together, it's also squeezing the hips and the ribs together. So getting that real tuck under and that real tightness. You should be able to feel that in that upper abs, but this is what, this exact motion is what shoulder mounts are all about. It's that pulling from above you, which is what the arms are doing and engaging that upper core and the hip flexors to lift the legs up. Let's do another 10 more of these. Six, five, four, 
three, two, and one. And we're gonna go straight back to your toe tap. So reset, imprint the spine, shins parallel to the ground and toe tapping. And it should feel a little bit easier this time to engage and keep the lower back on the ground. Reset as many times as you need to. It really concentrate all of that strength into the abs when you isolate something <laughs> in three different movements <laughs> or four different movements. And just go ab movement after ab movement. Oh, looking good. I can't believe how warm it is at this time of year that I'm able to open the doors and get fresh air and shit. Fresh air in 8 a.m. longer is ridiculous. <laughs> And keep tapping. We'll do another 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Place the feet on the ground and hip thrusters. Squeeze at the top, hold maybe for a pause and then come back down. So when you're squeezing at the top by holding in that pause, we're just getting that engagement to really settle in and to really feel the activation for an extended period of time. That's where the strength comes from, is those long, slightly longer pauses. They kind of work like tempo thrusters. Squeeze at the top and relax. And even as you come down, it's really easy to end up just going up and down and, and forget to connect the lower back to the ground. So as you come down, make sure you're still articulating the spine down so you get that lower back imprinting and then come back up again so that it, the spine is still laying down in a wave-like motion and coming back up in a bit of a wave-like motion. That just ensures that you get the nice little tuck of the tailbone before you start to move. Let's do another five here. Five, four, three, two, and last one. And then leg down, keep one leg bent, other leg to straight, turn out slightly, and leg lifts for 12, 11, 10, nine, eight, Seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. Change legs. I like to keep my fingers sometimes just kind of resting on my belly and just feel all the different muscles that are engaging. I find it really fascinating. <laughs> but also just so then I can check that I'm actually using my core and not just kind of relying on my hip flexor. We're also strengthening the hip flexor, oh, but the core needs is a bigger muscle, right? Hip flexor is tiny and the leg is heavy. So we want to uh, collaborate with as many muscles, enlist as many muscles as we possibly can for something like doing the leg lift. So I didn't count on this leg. So let's do three more because I think that's about 12. This leg is always weaker anyway. <laughs> and then going straight into our V-up. So knees bent. Arms up above the head and squeeze elbows. Knees lift up the shoulder blades all the way off the ground and release. So again, have that tiny little pause at the top and release. This one should be a little bit easier to keep the lower back on the ground just because you're coming into this really nice curved position, but still have that conscious awareness and try not to let the belly pop out as you come up. So what often happens is the belly wants to do a little bulge, but it's almost like a reaction. We want to keep it really nice and engaged. It's a reaction where it's trying to let go and then re-engage on the let on the like the let go pretty much. If that makes sense. Which I don't think I'm explaining very well. An idea. <laughs> okay. Nearly done with this, and then we're gonna do one quick round through all of those again. So let's do just keep going with those V-ups. And I'm going to set the timer for 40 minutes. 
Okay. So in 10 seconds, we're going to start with our toe taps again. And then it's just going to be one minute per movement. And back to toe taps just for one minute and then they're done for the day. Remember the further away from your body they are, the harder that they will be. So you can even take these into straight legs if you want to. Bending at the top, straightening at the bottom. Just as a slightly harder variation. Hands can be on the floor beside you or again, just gently feeling the abs, creating that mindful conscious awareness of the engagement. Nearly there. 10 seconds. 10 seconds. And then we're going straight into our hip thrusters. Set the feet, look for the heels and squeeze to the top and down. Articulate the spine up and down. Squeeze the glutes. Pull the feet back in towards you so that you're energetically keeping the heels close and then also engaging the hamstrings. There. 30 seconds left of your hip thrusters. And then I'd love to promise that we don't have any more of these, but we have single leg hip thrusters later. <laughs> but they're, they're different. They feel completely different when it's just one leg. 10 seconds. 10 seconds left of these, and then we're in our single leg lifts. And relax. Keep one leg bent and straighten the other straight up, turn out and lower. We're doing a full minute here. So when we get to the half hour, half hour to the 30 second mark, I'll let you know so that we can change legs. Keep it going. Halfway, there. Halfway, change legs. Right leg bends, left leg extends. Keep that turn out so that you're using your adductors. So think adductors, think that inner thigh as you lift. 10 seconds. Last 10 seconds of these, and then we're moving into our V ups. And Knees bent, squeeze elbows to knees, lift the shoulder blades up, tap the feet down. Try and keep the engagement throughout the whole movement, even as you hit the ground in between each rep. Try and stay strong and tight through the whole body. Keep it going. Halfway there. 30 seconds left of these. <sighs> nice work. Nearly done with this um, circuit and then we're moving on to the new thing. After this, we'll be sitting up. So we finish off the rep that you run, start to sit up. And we're going to come into a straddle. So it's going to be from laying down, we're going to come up into our straddle and extend our arms forward. Slowly lay back down, lay it back on the floor and then squeeze to come up. And then lay back down slowly. Squeeze to come up. So yeah, it's a good, it's a bit of a roll all the way down and then it's a roll back up. We start with your head and then extend through the hands and you'll notice that the legs kind of move and adjust. So they'll slide apart, <sighs> squeeze up, roll back down and try and maintain control throughout the whole roll. 
I am sliding backwards. I'm like traveling with these. <laughs> Getting closer and closer to my little office space. Excuse me, you're in the way. Seven seconds left of this. Now we're moving into an L sit to tabletop. Excuse me, Poppy, I love you, but no. So come into um, just a seated position, legs together, so like a pike, and then hands behind you with the fingertips facing towards you, lift the hips up. Then you're gonna slide them back under you. So keep the hips up and then slide back up into a tabletop. It's a little bit easier if you've got socks on, if your mat's quite grippy, it's a little bit harder. So slide back to L sit, slide forward and up tabletop. So the heels slide back as you come in, the hips stay lifted. And then squeeze at the top. So you may need to have the hands further apart. It's also really good with blocks with this one. You can also, to modify, bend the knees. So come up to a tabletop with bent knees and then swing the hips back, keep them lifted. Push up, bent knees, squeeze back, keep the bum floating off the ground. Next movement we've got into your tabletop. So either with knees bent or legs straight, and we're just doing leg lifts. They're very hard from leg straight, <laughs> but from the tabletop, leg lifts, one side. And then at the 30 second mark, we're gonna swap. And change. Reset, lift the hips back up. Change legs, if you haven't already. Keep that slight turn out. So it's the same principle as the leg lift that we just did. Think adductor squeeze, adductor squeeze. Ten We're gonna change the direction of these. In a second, last 10 seconds. So we're gonna come up into that tabletop position again, extend the leg forward and then extend it out. Come back to the center, change legs. Come down, rest. Come back up, tabletop. Extend leg, bring it out to the side. Front, down. Come back to seat for a sec. Just to give your wrists a little bit of a break. So lift up, extend to the side, extend back. Extend to the side. Extend back. The other way that you can do this, if you want to give the rest a little break, is to lean on the back of a piece of furniture, like a sofa or a table, keep the hips lifted, and then you can stay up a little bit longer. Squeeze forward, squeeze to the side, squeeze forward and down. Squeeze forward to the side, forward and down, lift up and out, forward, down, up, out, forward, down. Take another break here if you need to, and then we're going to move back into our straddle sits. Whew, you need water. <laughs> so straddle out wide. Arms straight ahead and slowly roll back down. Try and control the movement and then lead with the fingertips, squeeze. And you'll feel you have that moment of real like oh, engagement to get you back up in the same way that right as you get to your sticking point and laying back down, it gets kind of hard and you want to just flop back down. Try and stay strong and controlled throughout the movement. Squeeze and lay down and squeeze. You see how I go for time, plenty of time, plenty of time. <laughs> and squeeze. When you're ready to get set up for your tabletop, again, knees can be bent. And you kind of start with the hands a little bit further back so that when you come up to tabletop, you lift and you're, you can see 
that your shins are parallel to your arms and you've got a flat line from your neck to your knees. And then when you swing back, you lift the hips up slightly and it's a real compression. So this works the upper abs and that compression up here is what gets you the shoulder mount. It's not, it is lower abs to get, uh, lower abs get the legs up to about here and then to get them over to this bit, you need the upper abs. So this motion of tabletop to the compression in this L sit is all of that upper ab compression. So we've only got a few more seconds of this. Keep the hips up. So don't touch the bum down in this one. We've got 30 more seconds. Swing, squeeze, lift and compress and expand and squeeze. Ten seconds. These are hard work. Ten seconds left. Take a break if you need to. I need to. And then we're back into our leg lifts on tabletops. So I really recommend grabbing a chair or the back of the sofa for these, just because the wrist can get quite abused. <laughs> Lean the elbows on, come into your tabletop. And it's one at a time, leg lifts. Just doing 30 seconds of one leg and 30 seconds of the other before we add in halfway there. Halfway there. Reset, come down if you need to. Ooh, I like this sofa better for my, <laughs> it's like I can lean back a little bit more. And then other leg, if you haven't done started already, keep that turn out. Really think adductors, so inner thigh. Ten seconds. Ten seconds left. And then we're changing to the up, out, back, together. So keep the hips lifted, lift up, to the side, to the front, and down. And up, to the side, to the front, and down. Up, side, front, down. Up, side, front, down. Whew, this has been a hard set. <laughs> I programmed them in knowing like, okay, this is what the shoulder mount needs. I've got 30 seconds so I can continue with my story time. So I look at like my anatomy books and I like look at the movements that I know and I try and do the shoulder mount a couple of times to feel, okay, what do I actually use? What muscles do I recruit here? <laughs> I come up with this brutal workout <laughs> and now I'm like, oh, it's a bit hard. <laughs> 10 seconds left and then we're like back to our final fire round of the V sit-ups. Um, we're just going to do 30 seconds of each. So get straight into your straddle, sit up and try and go as many as you can in the 30 seconds. Good job, keep it moving. Halfway there. 30 seconds is done. So now we're moving on to our L sits of tabletops. Reset the hands, squeeze at the top. No time to waste, pump them out for 30 seconds. So these ones nice and fast. Two seconds. 10 seconds left, and then we're changing to our leg lifts. Find the back of your sofa, the back of your chair, and keep the tabletop. Leg lifts for 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Change legs. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, keep the hips up, 4, 3, 2, 1. Now they lift up to the side, back and down. Up to the side, back and down. 
and really point the toe, take that right foot towards the right corner of the room. So it's a 45 degree angle. So it's coming even further than to the side, right? It's kind of lift up into like a split. Nice, 10 seconds left, last one. And finish that. Have a sip of water. I definitely need one all that talking. Um, ooh, now we're gonna stand up. And kind of do something very similar, but with standing. So, whew, balancing. So the movement will be aeroplane pose, ground down into the left foot. Take that right leg back by squeezing the right glute. Maybe you come forward to counterbalance a little bit. Then you're gonna bring the leg in and forward and lift up no hands. So the same movement that we just did with the, with the back on the, um, on the sofa. Take it out to the side, lift it up as high as you possibly can. Lift, 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 lift. Back to the center and down. Left side, leg lifts behind you. Squeeze the glute. Then bring the leg through, flex the foot so that you can keep it straight. Lift with the inner thigh, lift, lift, lift. Have that external rotation. Then take the leg out to the side, lift, lift, lift. Come back to the center and release. Right side again. So squeeze the glute, ground down into the foot. Open the arms if you need to to counterbalance. Come forward with a straight leg, flex the foot so you can keep it straight. Externally rotate, lift, lift, lift. Take it to the side, lift, lift, lift. Back to the front and stand. Left side goes again, squeeze back. Aeroplane pose, open the heart. Come forward if you need to. Come through straight leg. I need to pause my timer, it's not really working for what's happening here. <laughs> Tap to pause, convenient. Lift, lift to the side and back to the front and together. One more time, each side, squeeze back. Hold for a little bit extra long this round. Come forward, leg goes through, lift, lift. Lift to the side, lift, lift, lift. Come back to the center. And then left side, last one. Hold, slow it down, a little bit longer. Come forward, lift up, higher than you did last time. Good height. And then out to the side, even higher than last time to the front and relax. Let's take a wide leg forward bend. Keep the feet parallel, maybe the toes slightly more in. Inhale to open the chest and then exhale to fold. Hands can come down to the floor or you can reach for the ankles or you can take opposite elbows and do a gentle swing. Whatever feels good. Let me see what's next. Ooh. Okay, we've just got our plank sequence and then we're back on our backs for our second core sequence. So whenever you're ready, we're gonna come down into our all fours. Um, so set up the shoulders over the wrists and the hips over the knees. And then straighten the right leg straight back behind you. Have a look, see if the back is like curving down, tuck under, extend through the crown of the head, extend through the tailbone so that you can feel that you've got a nice flat back, the ribs aren't flaring, and maybe even poke and make sure everything's nice and hard. Then we're gonna squeeze the glute to lift the leg. And it doesn't go very high, definitely no, no higher than the hip, maybe not even as high as the hip. Just pulsing up with that right glute for the minutes. Now we'll come back to our timer. And squeeze. And 
the way we'll do it is we'll just do um, 30 seconds one leg, 30 seconds the other leg, and then change movements. Halfway there. And that's your 30 second point, change legs. Reset the back, extend your kind of the head, tailbone extends, reach up everything nice and tight, and then squeeze the left glute. Ten seconds. Ten seconds left. You can come up onto the fists. If the hands get tired, then we're coming into donkey kick. So come back to the first leg, keep the leg bent, keep the foot flexed. Keep that back, um, back nice and flat. So keep ribs from flaring and your lips pulsing high up. So the knee's trying to get higher than the hip this time. So you're going to your maximum, squeeze the glutes, squeeze the glute, and really focus on trying not to let the back dip down with every squeeze. So we're staying nice and tight in the core, even though the glute is engaging. Halfway there. Halfway there, change legs. So reset, get the core nice and strong, froggy, oh sorry, donkey leg, and squeeze up. Ten seconds. Ten seconds left of this movement, and then we're into a plank. Oh, whenever that leg comes down, come straight into your plank, shoulders over the uh, wrists, and then we're going to go froggy to plank. So bend the knees, take the hips all the way back to get that nice springiness, almost like you're about to go into a child's pose, and then spring forward into a plank. Squeeze down. Bring forward. And you'll notice that when you come forward, every single muscle in your body engages to catch you in that plank position. Halfway there. 30 seconds left. So you can pump these out really quickly or nice and slow and really feel the squeeze as you get to your plank. Maybe in the next round we'll go really quickly. Ten seconds. Ten seconds left. This is our fire round. This is the hard part. So we'll go two rounds for this. Relax. We're coming into a plank, dog bird plank. So a dog bird from on your knees is opposite hand and foot raised. So you can just do these pulsations from your knees. That's your option one is to squeeze the knees and the Elbows together. Option two, you're up in a full plank and you're balancing. Changing arms and legs every now and then there. to give the wrist a little bit of a break. But this, in this full plank version, just the balance will be enough. You don't need to do any pulsations. If you on your knees, the pulsations are for you. Ten seconds. Ten seconds left. And then we're back to our straight leg, leg lifts. So on your knees, leg goes straight back behind you, tap it on the ground, engage the core and lift. And I'm sweaty already. <laughs> yeah. It's going to be a great day. Nice and tight in the core. So the glute doing all of the work here to lift that leg up. There. Change sides. Other leg. Straight back into it. You have nice juicy glutes by the end of lockdown because glutes are the easiest things to train. <laughs> when, oh, sorry, Papa. When you've got Ten no seconds. limited equipment. It's all glutes and push-ups. <sighs> okay, straight into donkey kick. So go back to the first side, leg bent, take it to the highest point, reset the core, then pulse. Pulse, pulse. Tiny little pulsations. And really feel the squeeze in the glute. So think squeeze, 
rather than lift. Ooh. Keep it going. Nearly there. This is our last round of these. And change. Last round, last side. Squeeze. Ooh, last few seconds. Feel that burn. Oh, this is brutal. <laughs> 10 seconds. Have a rest if you need to. Get ready for your dog bird. Bird dog. Either in plank or on knees. So whatever you did on the first one. See for the last few seconds. I'll let you know when we get to the 30 seconds if you can try the other version. Keep breathing as you move. Try not to hold the breath, especially if you're holding balancing poses. You want to keep the breath moving to keep oxygen flowing through the muscles. That's your 30 second point. So if you wanted to change variations, give it a go. Opposite hand to leg comes off the ground. Extend through the toes, extend through the fingers. 10 seconds left. This is your last one. Two and one, release. <laughs> oh, that was tough. <laughs> Let's come down onto our backs. Just five minutes left. <sighs> so we're starting with just a hollow body hold. So this is kind of like a rest, but not at all. So it's kind of like you're coming up into your hundreds. So Pilates hundreds. Actually, we'll just do hundreds. It's a lot easier. So imprint the spine. Shins parallel to the mat. Push. Shins halfway, um, chin parallel to the mat. Squeezing the ribs to the hips. And we're pulsing the hands up and down. You can straighten the legs up above or lower them towards the ground if you want them a little bit harder. And we're pulsing. Three, four, six, seven, eight, nine, twenty. Three, seven, eight, nine, thirty, two, seven, eight, nine, forty. Keep squeezing up. Seven, eight, nine. halfway there. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, six. Yeah. Keep squeezing. Make sure the shoulder blades stay lifted. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, seventy, eighty. Keep squeezing. Ninety. Last ten. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, and release back down. Whew. Have a little rest if you need it, and then we're gonna go straight into our reverse crunches. So reverse crunches. You can keep the hands placed on the ground so that the palms are flat beside you and you're lifting the hips. Squeezing with the lower abs to lift the hips off the ground. And then we'll, the legs will come over the face slightly or come towards you. But the idea is to try and keep the legs going straight up and down. So rather than coming into this plow, we want to feel a real lift upwards. So that's where you'll get the really nice burn and a really nice strengthening position. Oh, I've lost my timer entirely, but that's okay. Last three, two, one. And now we're coming into single leg thrusters. So squeeze up into the bridge, take one leg up, and then tap the glute back down. We'll tap the back back down. So squeeze up with one leg and tap back down. Hands can be on the floor beside you, palms facing down to help keep you straight and aligned. We'll do 30 seconds. Change other leg. So come up into the thruster first, then lift the leg, then squeeze down and pulse up. Down, up, up, 
seconds. 10 seconds. And we just got one more round of both of those movements. And then we're done. Well, all three of those movements, sorry. So we're back to hundreds. So squeeze up, get your shins parallel or legs straight or have them at an angle. Squeeze the shoulder blades up, extend through the fingers and pulsing for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, nine, ten, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, twenty, 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 tw
And then exhale, release, take both hands to the inside of that lunge. Maybe walk the foot forward and out a little bit more so that you can allow the hips to come down and towards the ground. Maybe push the front leg to straight and then bend. Just a couple more here. And then let's change legs. So you can come back up, turn around, or just swap them out, whatever works. Start by tucking under. Stay upright. The, the reason you stay upright is because as soon as you come forward, the stretch will move into the, the back and other parts of the hip. Whereas up here, we can really isolate it into the hip flexor. But if your hip flexors are already quite open, it can be a little bit hard to feel it. So that's why we take the arm up and over and just increase that uh, range. So my right flex, hip flex is a little bit more open than the left. And so it takes a little bit more time to find the stretch, but it's still there, <laughs> still needs to happen. Oh, take another deep breath in. And then exhale, release, come forward, come to the inside of the leg, walk that foot out and forward a little bit more. Straighten and bend. Just a few little pulsations here. Ooh. And then we're gonna slide that left leg back. So bring both hands to the inside of the left leg, slide it back around, tuck the tailbone under and reverse cobra, lay all the way down. Take the hands slightly more forward and out, zip the legs back together so that they're nice and strong, squeeze the toes together and just gently lift up. Take the hands as far out and forward as you can so that you can let the heart sink forward. So you should be getting a nice gentle ab stretch and a stretch through the back of the heart. Release, come down, maybe bring the hands closer together and more forward. Lift up a little bit higher, keep pulling the heart forward. Exhale, release. One more gentle, maybe the hands come a bit closer. Maybe you come all the way up into an up dog, lifting the thighs off the ground, rolling the shoulders back, lifting the heart. Bend the knees, come back to child's pose. Knees wide, toes together. Walk the hands back towards you and then walk. Baby. And then walk them back behind you until you can kind of come back onto your hands, tuck the tailbone under and lift the hips up and relax back down. So just pulsing like that, lifting, tucking the hips under, push up and relax. Tuck under and relax. Whew. It's a really nice one on the quads. And on the hip flexors, you can lay all the way down in this. So come onto the elbows and then put the head down. But it, it sometimes goes into the lower back. So see how you feel with that. If it's okay on your lower back to just have about five to 10 breaths here, chilling out. <sighs> Try and make the exhale a bit longer than the inhale. Thank you for the kisses. Oh, look, bless, he brought me a teddy. And then we're gonna slowly come back up, first onto the elbows and onto the hands, then come forward, come into a little down dog just to stretch out the back of the legs, walking, bending one knee at a time, and then walk the feet forward to the front of the mat, stay in a forward bend. Again, hold opposite elbows and swing, or you can hold the ankles and pull, or just hang. And then we're gonna slowly roll up one vertebrae at a time. With the head and shoulders coming up last. Thank you so much. Ta -da. The end. <laughs> Hope you enjoyed that. Pilates, pole specific Pilates. Um, yeah, that was a great idea. We definitely. Yeah.
do more of these. I'm going to try shoulder mount on Saturday. Yay! <laughs> Thank Are you, you coming? Man.